Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason. I'm here to bring you the retrospective to Holloway versus Cater and kind of a weird one, a Wednesday morning card of all things. Uh, Chiesa versus Magni card taking place on the 20th. So that's why we're getting this out today. And so we'll just be coming uh, with them fast and furious leading up to UFC 257. So it's just kind of a hectic week and we're going to try to get through this here. We have all the fights crunch for Chiesa versus Magni. We have the look back at Holloway versus Cater ready where we went five and four five and just one and two on the patreon and eh, not the best of nights but we'll get into them here's the show All right, so let's kick things off with what had to be one of the performances of a lifetime out of Max Holloway. You know, so on the original podcast, I had said no matter who I picked in that fight, I thought I was going to be wrong. I went with Holloway. I got it right. Uh, but uh, this was not an easy fight to call going in. But uh, once you saw it, there's really no reason to have any kind of 2020 uh, retrospective questioning of that decision. Uh, however, though, you know, I was actually telling my buddy right before uh cater was set to walk out i actually felt really good about the cater uh, fight i felt like maybe i made the wrong decision i thought that he was going to be able to put it to max maybe get him out of there no uh, <laughs> i'm just going to stop myself right there holloway put the gas on this guy every round he landed 445 significant strikes uh let's see how many were thrown overall 744 to 283 and uh, it was a 59% strike rate. Uh, it was phenomenal stuff from Holloway. You know, I can't do it justice. Go back and watch it. It's a performance of the lifetime, especially in the fifth round. Max Holloway is talking shit to the cornermen, the commentators, Dana White, screaming at Cater. He's the best boxer in MMA and blasting him at the face all at the same time, dancing around. He's got shades of Muhammad Ali dodging punches out there. And he made Cater look like just an amateur by comparison, you know, the Holloway era is still here, and I'm wondering what is going to be next for him. Obviously, Ortega and Volkanovski are going to square off, and so maybe that'll leave room for Holloway to get back in there. But after the performance yesterday, I'm okay with that trilogy fight. I think it should happen, him versus Volkanovski, or even a part two to Ortega versus Holloway, but I think we know how that one would end if Ortega doesn't beating Volkanovski. Either way, though, there's great things in store for Holloway, and the light is not snuffed out on Cater. He hopefully will bounce back from this. He's going to need a long, lengthy layoff, though. I think between six and eight months for him to bounce back and heal uh, from this one. So we'll see how things play out for him. Unfortunately, in a lot of ways, I sort of wish Herb Dean had actually pulled the uh, pulled the plug on the fight earlier on just to save him from the damage. But Cater could have bounced back and maybe won this thing. He did throw heavy hands. Maybe if one connects, I end up being wrong. But things played out as they did, and Holloway picked up the decision of a lifetime. Like I said, go back and watch it. I cannot give you anywhere near the level of commentary that will justify that fight. So please go ahead and watch it. It was Fight of the Night money for sure. Uh, along with uh, Ponzinibbio Jiang for performance tonight and uh, DeCirco against Buckley for performance tonight. So those are the three bonuses overall. Moving on to the next one, we got right as well. Uh, Carlos Condit defeats Matt Brown. Uh, really good fight here. I don't think it was quite a 30-27 decision in my personal opinion. However, Carlos Condit did outdo Matt Brown. The only time I think Matt Brown did actually maybe win a round uh, was maybe in the first or maybe in the second. I thought that Carlos Condit though reversed the position against Matt Brown in the first and ended up honestly winning that round because he was doing most of his damage even though it was off of his back and then finishing it on top uh, justified him for the win there Uh, and honestly he just looked better than Matt Brown really everywhere Uh, the striking was all Condit it was classic Condit kickboxing Uh, Matt Brown looked uh, like he was sort of stuck in the mud he didn't have quite the speed or aggression that he used to have and so I think that showed here and where he tried to execute a game was on the mat where Condit used to be vulnerable and probably still is, but Matt Brown did not have any questions for Condit that he could not answer, and so he ended up picking up a phenomenal victory. Uh, I think to close that is UFC contract, so it'll be interesting to see what Condit does. I've always liked the natural born killer, but his time at the UFC may have come to pass, and he may be looking at Bellator and other options, but if he decides to stay with the UFC, I'll be happy to see him continue fighting here uh, in the organization, 
Uh, however, I just don't know where he'll be able to go from here. I don't think in his weight class he's going to be fighting anywhere near the top of the rankings anytime soon. Uh, so, you know, it just remains to be seen what the best course of action is for Condit. If it is to go to Bellator and he can get some good money out of that, I say, hey, make the most of the money while you can. So uh, we'll see what happens with him, but uh, we did get that one correct. And when we got wrong, uh, Li Jing Liang defeats Santiago Ponzinibbio. So this is one of my Patreon picks, along with Holloway and Buckley, which uh, two out of those uh, three did get incorrect. But uh, yeah, Ponzinibbio, he did look rusty. Uh, he looked hesitant to pull the trigger. Granted, uh, Jing Liang or Lee was, was giving him a lot of different looks. I think it was confusing, and I think all the time out of the octagon really showed that he did not look super comfortable there. Uh, what I talk about, his high fight IQ, his killer instinct, those were not on display. It did not look like the Ponzinibbio that last went out and defeated Neil Magny uh, in his last outing back in 2018. It was a different guy in there. Uh, you know, the guy that defeated Gunnar Nelson and Mike Perry wasn't there that night. That was several years ago. And I don't know where that guy is. I don't know if he'll be back. You know, injuries, uh, time out of the cage. It's tough to bounce back, especially in a really competitive 170-pound division. So we'll see what happens. Uh, great move for Lee, though. Picks up a phenomenal win, $50,000 as well. And, uh, you know, kind of uh, ends uh, kind of a really hot prospect. I don't know if he was beyond prospect. Hot contender there for a while. I mean, this is a guy that probably should have been fighting Woodley without the injury. Um, certainly could have been fighting Usman. And now we're not talking about him really doing anything at all in Ponzinibbio. So uh, we'll see what happens. I hope he bounces back. But at the same time, if he doesn't have it, I don't want to see him fight. I don't want to see him go out in a shield. So it is what it is. And uh, we got that one wrong. And next one we got incorrect. Uh, this one was tough. Uh, Alessio DeCirco defeats Joaquin Buckley. Uh, so I thought that uh, Buckley, you know, it was just sort of a freak accident, I think, honestly, for Buckley. It was a lapse in judgment. Um, he was sort of ducking. I think he was trying to duck a head kick is my best assumption, but DeCirco threw a body kick, which ended up clipping him in the head is my best read on what happened. And he caught him on the temple. Good. Uh, basically just followed it up with a couple punches, and Circo ended up picking up a phenomenal knockout. Uh, we expected big things out of Buckley, given you know his spectacular knockout over Kasang and I, and then bounced back with another win uh, thereafter against Jordan Wright via knockout in the second round. And uh, I think everybody was looking at him picking up a solid win. He was definitely a big favorite. I thought he was going to be lock of the night, if I'm honest. And uh, he just did not do it for us. Uh, it is what it is. We got that one incorrect. And another one we got incorrect, Punale Soriano. It was a night of uh, Hawaiians, flying Hawaiians for sure, uh, because he defeats Dusko Todorovic. Todorovic, uh, you know, I thought that he was going to have it, uh, but uh, his uh, his takedown game was not there really at all. Uh, his striking was uh, a little bit sad, and he ended up, getting a knockdown twice and ultimately knocked out early on in the first round. Was it early on though? No, it was late in the first round. My apologies. Uh, knocked out late in the first round. And so I uh, never got to put all of his skills on display. It is what it is. Uh, I'd like to see more out of Todorovic, uh, but uh, the flying Hawaiian was here to stay and here to pick up a W. And when we got correct, this was a debut fight, so I didn't put too much weight into it. But Jocelyn Edwards does defeat Wu Yanan. Uh, that was one I thought was going to be pretty straightforward, and it was outstriking uh, Yanan 88-58. Uh, Wu did pick up the one takedown, um, but it was not enough, and Edwards even got a submission attempt in. Uh, another one we got correct, though. Uh, Carlos Felipe does defeat Justin Taffa. Uh, it was a split decision, so it was a close one here. Uh, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, I think, honestly, it really came down to damage. Felipe did more damage. Taffa got more volume, 86 to 77. Uh, but it really was the damage for Felipe, and uh, that's why he picked up the win in a split decision. And another split decision that did not go our way, we had uh, Ramzan Amiv defeat David Zawada. I thought Zawada here was going to be able to put some of his ground game on display. Had no submission attempts, however, and was outstruck and outtaken down 4-1 to one throughout the contest. However, it was a split decision. It was close. We just did not have the split fall for us. And then in the last two, Vanessa Mello defeats Sarah Morris. This was a hesitant fight as far as picks go for me. I had Morris in this one, but realistically, it could have gone either way, and Mello picks up a phenomenal win. Then finally, to round things out, Austin Lingo picks up a win over Jacob Kilborn, uh, bringing us to 5-5 five and five on the night. Good striking out of Lingo, by the way. Also scored the knockdown. Came real close to closing the door, I think. Um, it just uh, put in a phenomenal featherweight performance that I think will carry forward to his next fight. Uh, but yeah, 5-5, five and 1-2 five, uh, and two on the Patreon. So not our finest uh, night. Um, 
you know, some of the things just didn't go our way. I think there was some freak accidents. And then uh, other cases, you know, guys like Max Holly went out there and just proved how right we can be sometimes. And so I'll always take a good solid win like that. Uh, but we got to look forward. We got to get into this weird Wednesday card. I believe this one's starting at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. So just keep that in mind. In fact, I'm just going to verify that real quick. All right, my apologies. It's actually, me 9 a.m. as the start card. Uh, but uh, hey, that's what happens when you fight in Abu Dhabi. You get these weird times. And so. Uh, if you're working at home or got nothing going on, put the fights on. But uh, be hard for, I think, a lot of people to watch it. But, hey, let's get into it. Here's the Fight Picks. All right, we're going to kick things off with the main event here, as we always do, with Michael Chiesa versus Neil Magny. And in this contest, I am going with Michael Chiesa in this one, and I think it's honestly going to come down to the grappling performance of Chiesa. We've seen him uh, really just make a name for himself as a premium, as a premium is a weird way to describe him, as a premier is probably a better way to describe him, premier grappler in the UFC uh, with phenomenal wins over great talent, um, Carlos Condit, Diego Sanchez, uh, Rafael Dos Anjos probably being the best one of those. Uh, but Magnus no, you know, slouch, uh, wins over Lee, who we just talked about uh, in the Ponzinibbio fight. Uh, Martin, Rocco Martin, and Robbie Lawler in his last one. So both these guys have a three-fight winning streak coming into this. And we've seen great hands out of Magny. But I think that, honestly, he ma- uh, Kiesa is going to be able to neutralize Magny by scoring some takedowns. And really, if takedowns are part of the game, which they are for Magny as well, I think Kiesa is just going to have the overall edge in this one when it comes to the grappling performance, which is where I think Kiesa is going to get it done here. Gas tank wise, you know, I think that Magny might have the slightly better gas tank, uh, but assuming Kiesa can do damage on the ground, he'll be able to sap some of, I think, of the larger tank of Magny and up picking up a win here. Honestly, I could see a submission victory sometime in the third or fourth round for Chiesa, uh, but I can just as easily see this thing go into a decision, so I'm not sure how that one will play out, uh, but just one other thing to keep in mind, South Poffa Chiesa and a five inch reach disadvantage. Okay, uh, so he's coming with a South Paw stance, but if uh, Magni can stick behind the jab, it could be tough for Chiesa to get inside. I think he'll be able to close the distance, though. I really do. And I think he'll be able to get a win, uh, especially with his performance over a still very dangerous Rafael Dos Anjos in his last outing. Not that Robbie Lawler isn't still dangerous, but he's not quite on the same level, uh, I think, as he was, where Dos Anjos is still fighting at a high level, higher than Lawler, in my personal opinion. So uh, based on MMA math, I'm going with Chiesa in this one, but also the numbers are what really back it up, and that's the real pick. I'm going to go with Michael Chiesa in the main event. All right, I hate to break it to you guys, but there is a bit of a steep drop-off after that one. Uh, We don't have quite as many good fights on this card. They're not bad fights. There's some uh, good up-and-comers I'll mention in the debuts later on, but uh, there's a bit of a drop-off because our co-man is Worley Alves versus Munir Leyes. Uh, and in this one here, you know, nothing against either one of these fighters. Uh, we'd only have one fight over M- for Munir over uh, Razak Hassan, And we have uh, several fights for Worley Alves, but uh, he's on a win-loss, win-loss sort of streak right now. And so uh, I'm not seeing uh, too much great stuff uh, for this one. But it could still be exciting. It's just a little bit of an unknown. And in this one here, I am going to go with Worley Alves here. Even though he hasn't performed as well recently, um, I think that there's too much of an unknown product with uh, Munir. And even though it did defeat Al Hassan, I think it could have been a fluke. And I got to stick here with the longer time in MMA, uh, more fights under the bright lights. Uh, also, the younger man as well, Lays, is uh, coming in at about uh, what's it? He's going to be thirty. He's thirty-three years old uh, versus Alves, uh, younger, coming in at just twenty-nine. So uh, just oh, actually, he uh, he just turned thirty. Uh, so his birthday was on the fourth. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but I think Ab Worley Alves here is going to have the talent. Uh, plus the numbers for Munir are a little lopsided right now. He has high takedown rate, super high striking volume. I don't think that carries forward. I think that's statistically insignificant. And I'm gonna stick with the vet Worley Alves in the coma. All right, next one here is going to be coming in at light heavyweight. We are going to have Ike Villanueva, the Hurricane, taking on Vinceas Morea Mamut. And in this one here, I do like Morea just a little bit more. Um, he does have, again, a few more fights in the UFC, even though he is on a losing streak. We have the same losing streak for Villanueva. He's come into the UFC, two losses right in Sherman in a row, and he also has no takedown game that he showed on display. He has a reach disadvantage, and I honestly think that Morea is going to be able to make 
make good work of him. Now, granted, he hasn't had a win uh, in his last three contests. Uh, however, I think uh, the experience and the fact that he did at least get a single win inside the octagon and his takedown performance we've seen in the past, even though his takedown accuracy is low, he's shooting 2.61 over 15 minutes, has a high rate of going for submissions, and I think he has the talent to pick up a win here. We'll see how things play out. I am going with Vinceus Moreo for the win. All right, this next one here. I think a lot of people are going uh, with the younger fighter, but I'm going to stick with an old classic. We have Roxanne Modafari taking on Viviana Rujo. And so Arujo, uh, she is younger, but uh, not by a heck of a whole lot. Uh, she's coming in at, uh, was it 35 years of age at this point, or 36 years of age, rather. Uh, Modafari looking uh, almost 40 years old at this point. Uh, but she has the experience. Uh, she still has the talent. She did defeat uh, Lee in her last outing, Andrea Lee. Granted, there was a knee injury, but she still picked up a win there. Macy Parber, again, Picked up a great win there. Uh, did lose to Murphy. Uh, however, uh, she's getting wins when she isn't supposed to. Uh, defeated in Tanina Shevchenko. Uh, Motifari has the talent, even though uh, she sometimes is a little wonky to watch fights. Uh, she's a little awkward, and I think she gives her opponents a lot of problems. Uh, Viviana Ruggio, I expect to have similar problems, especially having the reach disadvantage here, and I think having a just uh, not as deep a breadth of martial arts or MMA experience. She's just 9-2. and two. Motifari is 25-18. and 18. She has just a lot more experience in the octagon. I think it's going to pay off, especially where we see that Motifari is still winning, still highly capable, and still hungry to continue fighting some of the best women in the world at 125 pounds. Uh, I think that Motifari is going to make a good, solid work of Arujo, and I think this is a solid pick, even though a lot of people are going against the Happy Warrior. We're not going to sleep on her. We're taking her. We got Roxanne in this ladies' flyweight contest. All right, we're going to have some fun at flyweight because we have Matt Chanel taking on Tyson Nam. And in this one here, I like Chanel, although Nam is looking a little bit better uh, lately. Uh, we saw just uh, Chanel get, uh, I think, a little bit dismantled by Pantonja, even though he was coming in with wins over Espinosa, uh, <laughs> Espinosa Smolka, Inoue, and Beltran. Uh, however, I think that he's going to be able to bounce back in this one, even though we saw Tyson look really good in his last outing against Rivera. Uh, you know, he has a reach advantage, a little bit of a height advantage, he has a little bit of striking output, he has better takedown game, in my opinion. Uh, Nam does have good takedown defense, but I think Schnell will be able to push the pace here, get it to the mat, and bare minimum use his small uh, reach advantage, which is coming in at two inches, and stay behind his volume. I think his lost Pantoja taught him some lessons here. I think he's going to be able to bounce back, and I think he is going to be able to get a win here. Uh, we'll see how things play out, though, but we're going Matt Schnell as our flyweight pick. All right, this one's coming in at featherweight, and so this one's kind of a tough pick because we have one fighter with a small amount of work in the UFC, another one uh, with a whole lot of work in the UFC, but uh, just not doing as well lately. Uh, so we have Lerone Murphy taking on Douglas Silva DeAndre. In this one here, I like Lerone Murphy. He's looked really good so far in the UFC. Trains in England uh, with uh, Rocky himself. Uh, oh God, his name is escaping me right now. Uh, Leon Edwards. There we go. Leon Edwards uh, trains with him, and I think he's a good talent that's being lo overlooked a little bit right now. And with his win over Ricardo Hamos, I think that he is going to be uh, able to pick up a good win here. Uh, picked up a solid knockout, 4 minutes and 18 seconds into that contest. And I think he's going to be able to continue that win streak here, uh, put another one together, and defeat a uh, sort of traveling Brazilian. Uh, with, I think, what is honestly a padded record. There's a lot of jungle fights in there for Douglas Silva. And uh, so even though he's 26-3, and three, I don't think it's the most realistic 26-3 and three after we look at some of his losses in the UFC. But bear in mind, they were some of the best in the biz, rough font Peter Yan or Petzer Yan, uh, but then he came back and beat Hennem Brow, who is not fighting as well lately. Either way, though, hey, maybe I'm not the most certain about this one, but I'm going with the young guy. I'm going with Murphy to pick up a win. All right, I feel like I've talked about this fight several times uh, because it keeps getting canceled. We have Omari Akhmedov and Tom Brees. Uh, so in this one here, I'm going with the Wolverine. Despite his loss to Weidman, this guy is just a takedown machine, uh, and I think he's going to have Brees on his back basically this entire fight. Uh, his striking, I think, is a little bit questionable, if I'm honest with Akhmedov. That's not his bread and butter here. Um, but I think his wrestling, his grappling is just bar none. Uh, he's scoring takedowns in almost all of his fights. Uh, six against Al-Hassan, and I 
expect him to do the exact same thing to Tom Breeze, keep him on his back. So short of Tom Breeze being able to uh, really utilize his kickboxing ability, uh, maybe put some hurting on Akhmedov. I do not expect this one to go well for him. Uh, the Englishman, I'm afraid, is going to be put out in this one. Uh, despite coming off a win over Bilar, I think that Akhmedov bounces back from the Weidman win. He has great wins over guys like Heinich, Cummings, Boach, uh, and a draw of Martin Vittori, just to put it out there. So uh, I don't expect this one to pose too much of a problem with him. Tom Reese is a great fighter, uh, good fighter, I guess, better way to put it. But uh, I think Almaria is a bit better, and he just gets slightly uh, derailed uh, by Weidman in a, what I think was honestly a fluke loss. So we'll see him bounce back here. We're going for a win with Omari Akhmedov. All right, just two more here before we get to the debuts. And we have the Tibetan Eagle, Su Majeri, taking on Zukar Adashev. So I've seen Su uh, one other time before. No, sorry, two other times. I, I did catch his Gordon and Sukumtat fight. Missed the Smolka one. And this guy has looked good. I know he did lose to Smolka. Uh, but we don't have a lot of information for Adashev, just as a loss to Tyson Nam. And we've seen some really good stuff out of this Chinese prospect in Su. Uh, great striking output. Granted, he has a flyweight where striking output is really high in general. But I think he has the speed and footwork. He also has some good submission game, scoring 1.3 over uh, every 15 minutes, and so I think he's dangerous everywhere. He has a 7-inch reach advantage. Uh, also, we don't have a whole lot of experience for Adashev coming in at just 3-2, and two, so I don't even know if he honestly belongs yet in the UFC. I think he really belongs outside of the UFC, picking up some more MMA experience, but he's being thrown to the Wolves in this one with Sue, who's 13-4, and four, and on his way to 14-4, and four, if I uh, do say so myself. So, we are going with Sue Majeri in this contest. All right, last one here. Dalcha Lambagula is going to be taking on Marcus Perez. And in this one here, you know, I had picked Lambagula to defeat Magomed Ankalev a little while back. Uh, and that one clearly did not work out. But I think he's going to bounce back in this one. The guy is still built like a brick shit house, and I expect him to perform well. He's a he's a tank of five foot eight, if there ever was one. Uh, and so even though Marcus Perez has the size advantage, he does not have the reach advantage. And he also is on a, a bit of a slide himself. Losses to Duplessis, Terman, and uh, Sanchez before his win uh, over Hernandez. So uh, he's really just three, uh, sorry, two and three over his last five. And uh, I think the loss to Ankalev um, was just a bit sudden. I would like to see more to Lambagula. Assuming his chin doesn't have too many miles on it, I expect him to bounce back in this one, especially against a guy that does lean on some takedowns on occasion. I don't think he'll have to put up with too much striking from Perez, but I could be wrong. Um, we'll see how things play out here, but uh, I'm going to go with the physical specimen that is Lambagula in this one. And then uh, for the couple uh, other debut fights here, let's talk about them real quick. Um, obviously, they are subject to change. We have Ricky Simone taking on Gatano Perello. I like Perello in that one. I want a little more information to come out first. Uh, we also have Francisco Figueredo taking on Jerome Rivera, and that one I like Figueredo. We have Mike Davis taking on Mason Jones, and this one I like Jones. And then we have Victoria Leonardo taking on Manon Faure. I like Faro in that one. Uh, Faure, F I O O F I O R O T. Faro, I think is how that one is pronounced. And the last one, uh, we have Khabib's little cousin, Umar Namagomedov, taking on Sergey Morov, uh, and, uh, or Morozov. And in this one here, I like Umar. I think he is going to be able to get a win. I think it is also his UC debut. He's had some injuries. Yeah, they're both making their debut. And uh, I've had some injuries. We'll see how he looks in this one. He's a small guy, a small one, Khabib, fighting at just 135 pounds. Uh, but that's one to keep a lookout out for because uh, Khabib does think he has the ability to be champion at some point in his career. Uh, maybe at 135, 145. We'll see what his weight class ends up being. But uh, he's a young guy, just 24 years of age, and I expect big things out of him. So let's uh, just talk about it one more time. We have Chiesa, Alves, Morea, Modafari, Schnell, Murphy, Akhmedov, Mudajeri, Lambagula, Pirello, Figueroa, Jones, Nurmagomedov, and Firo to round things out. So, you know the drill. If you'd like to get in touch with the Fighting Spirit Podcast, please head on over to fightingspiritpodcast at gmail.com. You also get in touch with me on Twitter at MMAFightPicks01, and there's also the Patreon as well. Granted, we weren't as good with the picks this past week, but I am hoping to bounce back here. We'll try to put some ones out here. Uh, we're going to try to stay away from, I think, the debuts, but there's some pretty solid ones in there. Uh, Kiesa Wink Wink, I think, is going to be one of them, and I'll be sure to put up all the rest on there. So, until I speak with you again next time, which is going to be pretty damn soon because we are just a few days away, honestly, from the McGregor Poirier card taking place on the 23rd. Uh, that that entire card is fire. So we kind of put up with this one a little bit. Then we get uh, some great co-main, Dan Hooker, Michael Chandler. We got Jojo Calderwood, Jessica I. 
He's a steamroller for Volar, taking out Ottoman, uh, Aztar, uh, Mandy Hibas coming back, and some Mariana Rodriguez. Uh, let's see, Khalil Roundtree is coming back. I, I do like him a lot. We have the Nick Lenz fight that was canceled from last week. Uh, just some really solid fights out there. Uh, Armin Sutar, uh, Sucharkin taking on Nasser at Hyperquist. That's a little bit of a dark horse run in there. Just awesome fights on the UFC 257 card. And, of course, that uh, coveted, beloved Conor McGregor return bout. I'll be sure to have that one crunched up with uh, all the best uh, information I can get to you. So until I speak with you again next time, happy fight picking.